In this section, we'll discuss the angular momentum of a single particle. You may recall that the angular momentum vector, little l, is defined as the cross product between r, the position vector, and p, the momentum vector. And so for a single particle, we have a position vector here, r. Here's our momentum vector for that single particle there. When we cross r into p, we can apply the right-hand rule. And what we find in this case is that the angular momentum vector, l, points directly out of the page toward the camera. Now the angular momentum is conserved in a wide variety of systems. Uh, to look at what conservation of angular momentum exactly looks like, let's look at the time derivative of, of angular momentum. So here's the time derivative of the angular momentum vector, and of course that's equal to the time derivative of r crossed into p. We can take that uh, d by dt into the parentheses, and we're going to apply it using the product rule. So the first term we get is going to be r dot crossed into p, and remember that p is m times r dot. And so the first term here, r dot crossed into something which is a scalar times r dot, that's going to come out to be zero because that's a cross product with, of a vector with another vector parallel to itself. So all that's left is the second term, which in this case is r crossed into p dot. And you recall from Newton's third law that p dot is just the force on the particle. And so we find that the time derivative of the angular momentum vector is just the cross product of the position vector with any forces acting on that particle. We usually cast the product R crossed into F as gamma, capital gamma, the torque. So when you have a force uh, whose cross product with the position vector is non-zero, that results in a torque on the particle. And just to give a simple example uh, of a case in which the angular momentum of the particle is uh, conserved, imagine we have a particle with mass m traveling upward along the y-axis subject to no forces. So in that case it has a momentum vector p, which is just its mass times its velocity times y-hat. Its position vector is a little more complicated. Uh, it's shown here. The position vector, the x component, is just going to be some x naught, so it's some constant value. And then uh, the y-coordinate is going to be its velocity times time plus some initial value for the y-coordinate. Uh, and so uh, this represents a particle traveling uh, subject to no forces, it's just going to travel in a straight line uh, along the y-axis uh, at a fixed x value, x naught. Calculate the angular momentum for this particle. You see it's r crossed into p. Here's what that cross product looks like. Here's r on the left and p on the right. And when we take that cross product, what we find is the angular momentum for this particle is mv, so the mass times the velocity, times the position x naught times z hat. So the only parts that survive the cross product are the portions of each vector that are perpendicular to one another. So we can see here uh, y crossed into y hat, that's going to give us zero. So the only thing that we have left is x hat crossed into y hat, which gives us a z hat. And so the angular momentum for a particle traveling in a straight line in this way is just mv x naught z hat, which is a constant. This is a very important fact. The cross product between two vectors selects out only the portions of those two vectors that are perpendicular to one another. Everything else, uh, it turns out to be zero. Okay, so maybe not too surprising, you don't apply any forces. Uh, neither the linear momentum nor the angular momentum for the particle can change. But it turns out there's a wide variety of systems uh, for which the force is non-zero, uh, and in that case, the linear momentum is not going to be conserved. So p dot will be non-zero, but the angular momentum can still remain conserved. So recall our definition for torque, a capital gamma vector, of course that's a little l vector dot, and that's r crossed into f. What if we have a non-zero force that happens to run parallel to the position vector? A good example of such a force might be the force of gravity. So here let's imagine we have a very big mass m, and we've set our coordinate system so that its uh, origin lies at the center of, of big M. It's pulling gravitationally on another mass, little m, and that gravitational force is shown here. You can see in this case it points uh, along the negative r hat direction, so it points from little m to capital M. That's the force of gravity uh, on little m from big M. So we want to calculate the torque due to this force. We need to take the position vector, uh, scalar r times r hat, so that's just the r vector, crossed into the gravitational force. 
And of course, because the gravitational force lies along the radius vector, this cross product works out to be zero. And so this is a case where the uh, linear momentum of particle uh, little m is not going to be conserved. That is, there is a non-zero force, but because that force lies along the radius uh, vector, this force uh, conserves angular momentum. So linear momentum is not conserved, angular momentum is.